Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kurt. Welcome back to Farlands or Bust. Woof, episode 654. Episode 654 indeed. Hello, Wolfie. Hello, pigs. Let us secure the hidey hole. Grab Wolfie, ditch some cobblestone, and maybe pick up some, some wood and perhaps some food for Wolfie. But yeah, this is episode 654 of Far Lands of Bust for your Tuesday. <laughs> for your Tuesday, September 12th, 2017. And boy howdy. Boy howdy. If it seems like I've done this before, it's because I've done this before. This is, unfortunately, the second recording attempt. Ah, oh, man, that's frustrating. I got all the way through the second day of, of Far Lands or Bust uh, before I... I don't know what did it. I don't know what caused me to look. But I, I looked over at OBS and realized I'd never hit record. I'd never hit record. I have been s recording these episodes with, with OBS recently as opposed to DX Tori, which would have given me a... Uh, little colored indicator that I was recording or not. OBS is just, you gotta hit record. Uh, and I just forgot to hit record. Oh, and it was, I felt like I was on a roll. I felt like the things I were talking about were, were making sense and followed some sort of sensical flow. Ah, but but then then it it's, I was just telling nobody. I was talking to nobody. You don't have any idea how frustrating that is. <laughs> like, that realization that, ah, nobody is ever going to see that. When I'm talking here, uh, I, I unconsciously, or maybe even consciously, feel like I'm talking to you. Specifically you. You. No, just you as in the audience and the people who watch Far Lands or Bust. I feel like I'm talking to people. So when suddenly the flip switch is off, and it's like, oh, you've been talking to nobody, because you're not recording this, you idiot. Uh... Just the, just, it's, ugh, you know, it's that complete just realization of, oh, what a, oh, what a waste. <laughs> what a waste. So hopefully, hopefully, uh, I can recover. I have, I have correctly and faithfully reloaded a clean backup of the Far Lands or Bust world, so we don't have to worry about any hidey hole paradoxes or anything like that. Whoa. Still gotta worry about accidentally walking off cliffs, though. That's still a thing. Uh, and we're gonna... we're just gonna continue. We're gonna continue with here episode 654 of the series. It's been a while, but uh, yeah, that's because I... this entire month... It's already almost the middle of the month, but I've been away at PAX West. Uh, that started at the end of last month. <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah, I actually went ahead and stayed downtown. I think I mentioned this already. Just so that I wouldn't have to drive back and forth and back and forth and, and to actually also make, uh, a bit better, uh, time to, to hang out with friends and people that are in town that I don't get to see that often. So, yeah, I stayed downtown. Um, and then after the fact, a few of those friends stayed even later, uh, past PAX and stayed with me here in my luxurious... My luxurious Far Lands or Bust abode here in the outskirts of Seattle. <laughs> and uh, we did some kind of exploration and touristy things, which I haven't done at all since moving here. I mean, I've done some hiking, but uh, I've never seen the area as a non-resident. It's kind of the thing I was hearing from some people. It's like, oh, the instant you move to a place, you kind of stop looking as, as an outsider. Uh, the only things you're concerned about is where's the grocery stores or something like that. Uh, so yeah, that was kind of a fun thing. I mean, even just going to Seattle for PAX, I've I've not been downtown since I moved here a singular time in the past six months. So being able to check out some of the restaurants and, and scenes and uh, did one touristy thing with the group, the the underground tours, I guess. At some point in the early 1900s, the early city of Seattle burnt down. Very similar to Chicago. Uh, burnt down, because everything was made out of wood. And then they raised the street levels up a full story. So 
underground parts of the city is is what used to be the 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 main streets and the facades and the sidewalks of the original Seattle and because they just raised up the streets one story uh it's just all kind of empty and abandoned down there it's kind of interesting a little bit of a history lesson about the history <laughs> of Seattle I guess I could say in in any other context uh, but yeah that was interesting uh did that what else what else happened just restaurants and friends and we did a Farlander meetup kind of last minute there and had the good I don't know eight or ten people show up it's always good to meet meet Farlanders around town and who are in town for the PAX event so that was cool spent about an hour with with those folks so I hope they all had a good time and perhaps a good uh experience traveling back to from whence they came uh but overall PAX itself I've mentioned this previous PAXies. Uh, just the PAX, the PAX part of PAX is is becoming less and less interesting to me. The first day I like walked around pretty much the majority of the expo hall and was mostly uninterested in what it had to offer. Um, the only kind of quote unquote work thing I did was I got to meet uh, David Board, I believe his name is, who is the main developer of the game we played, Lifeless Planet, and currently developing Lifeless Moon, the, the kind of sequel to Lifeless Planet. So he was at the Indie Mega Booth and invited me to come down and play an early alpha version of the game. Currently got a Kickstarter going. Uh, they're looking to fund the remainder of the development of that game. Um, so certainly check that out. But yeah, I, I played that and uh, it seems like a lifeless planet experience. Very, very focused on the, the very dramatic ambient music and, and audio. Um, a very similar gameplay style and, and themes. Um, I, I, I guess the thing they're doing differently is that they're developing at the same time a standard, you know, screen version, but also a VR version, which has some extra kind of pizzazz, some VR-specific uh, puzzles and things, which he offered to let me play, but I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to probably... I don't own a VR thing. I'm, I'm definitely not going to play a VR version of the game, so let me play the normal version. So I did, uh, and uh, like I said, it was a, a good experience. Brought back a lot of memories from Lifeless Planet, which we did a, a YouTube Let's Play of. If you want to check that out. So yeah, that was kind of the only, like, uh, hello, I'm Kurt J. Mac. I'm a YouTuber. Let's talk YouTube things. Um, but yeah, it was really cool. He's he's also from Seattle, and uh, he's also uh, into astronomy and astrophotography and stuff, so he shared with me a few of his stuff he's worked on, and he went down to, to watch the total eclipse as well, um, and, and got some really cool photos of that, which was cool. Um, but yeah, overall, really, really nice person to, to finally meet and talk to, and looking forward to Lifeless Moon. Uh, and I'll certainly be playing that when that uh, is released, indeed. So yeah, big big week there, and, and did some exploring after the fact. Like I said, I had some friends stay. Uh, last one left on Sunday, and I pretty much I thought of like, ooh, get right back to work, start streaming again, start recording Far Lands of Us. But I either unconsciously or consciously decided I'll just take the rest of Sunday to kind of recover kind of do the laundry, kind of recoup from from both PAX and the week of having friends here, which was great. You know, sure, it might be like a social hangover or whatever, and as an introvert, it might be a little bit overwhelming, but it was really good having other humans to interact with uh, for a while and kind of see, like I said, see the area as as, as a tourist as opposed to as a, what I currently am as a, as a resident. So I did some things uh, and saw some places that I maybe thought were interesting to check out at one point, but it's like not by myself. I'm not gonna go to this island across the ferry and and, and check this out by myself, you know. So it, it, it was cool to have friends around. So yeah, that was that was a good time. That was a good time. Kind of sad it had to end, but it had to end and I, I have to get back to work. Um, feel like I'm Twitch, uh, I'm missing out on some stuff. Twitch this month of September is doing half price subscriptions for first time subscribers and uh, I haven't streamed a singular minute this entire 
this entire month, so I'm a little bit worried that I might not be taking full advantage of that offering uh, to help out the the channel and myself and and keep keep on keeping on with that. Um, but I'm just you know I I wanted to be streaming right now, but I I, I I'm bad at YouTube and forgot to hit record, so I'm having to record this episode a second time. Uh, but I'll certainly be trying to stream today, and I'll be trying to stream tomorrow as well. Or, well, today is in Monday. Sorry, this episode comes out on Tuesday. Try to try to be streaming on Monday and also Tuesday. Probably when you're watching this episode. Uh, but then I'm going away again. <laughs> Talking about getting back to work. Uh, then I'm going away again for the week. and Or for the rest of the week, excuse me. Uh, and I'll talk about that in the morning. <laughs> And a wakeness and a busy monthness. Hey. Ow! And a twist my ankles-ness. Wolfie, do you have yeah, your tail's not quite up to spec there. There we go. So yeah. <laughs> Gonna be putting this episode up, streaming Monday and Tuesday what I can, and then I'm leaving for the 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 the, the glitz and glamour of Los Angeles. Pasadena more specifically, because if you remember, I'm going to JPL, the Jet Propulsion Na blah, 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 blah. Jet Propulsion Laboratory, NASA, um, is having a NASA social that I very luckily got selected for, for the Cassini Grand Finale. Cassini has been the orbiter around Saturn for the past two decades. Studying Saturn, it landed the Huygens probe on the surface of Titan, the moon, uh, and also has just been continuously orbiting and studying the moons and Saturn and the rings and stuff, and uh, really kind of a major mission as far as NASA is concerned. A lot of our previous studies of, of the outer planets have simply been flybys. Uh, so to have Cassini, much like Juno orbit orbiting Jupiter, Cassini orbiting Saturn for the better part of two decades uh, has been a, just a, a wealth of, first of all, pretty incredible pictures, uh, but also science, science and stuff like that. And it's it's reached the end of its uh, mission, so it's actually already on its final orbit where it uh, has already passed through the rings, between the planet and the rings, which is amazing. Um, and I think even as of yesterday made its final closest approach and, and, and study of the moon Titan and is now on its way to plunge, plunge dramatically into the cloud tops of Saturn itself uh, just so that it doesn't get lost orbiting Saturn and, and impact one of the moons that potentially harbor life because there's water and liquid and heat and stuff present and that's one of the things it's been studying but uh yeah they're they're plunging it into the surface of saturn and this thursday and friday they're holding the nasa social uh thursday is pretty much going to be almost a whole day thing and i'm, I'm still deciding how I'm, I'm gonna try to share it it would be interesting i haven't yet tried twitch's mobile streaming and i'm not sure what sort of connectivity i'm gonna have uh certainly on the tour but also just at the NASA social. It would be interesting to try the live streaming thing from mobile, but I'm also kind of worried about the quality. I don't have any like special fancy external mics or things like that, ways ways to watch the chat and things like that. So that might be kind of tough, uh, but I'm at the very least bringing my GoPro and uh, obviously my phone to be able to record and take pictures and uh, Twitter and stuff like that. Uh, and, and by all means, like I have in the past NASA socials I've been to, I'll certainly come back and, and do recaps and talk on stream and here in Firelands Bust about all the things I saw and, and whatnot to share with you guys. But uh, yeah, I might try that out. So yeah, Thursday is pretty much touring JPL, getting to talk to some of the mission scientists. Um, I'm most excited about touring JPL, like there's the spacecraft assembly building, there's the Mars yard where they have the analog Mars rovers to, to test out what terrain they can go over and things like that. Uh, so that's one of the main objectives, the main reasons I've always wanted to 
tour JPL, having toured Kennedy Space Center a few many times. Um, kind of to see a different sort of facility and stuff like that. You know, the places where Curiosity and Cassini and Juno kind of originate and were built. Uh, that'll be kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, then we're talking to mission scientists and stuff, and then we're actually going to participate and be present for a press conference taking place on Thursday, September 13th. Um, oh, I'm sorry, September 14th. Thursday, September 14th at 1.30 p.m. Pacific time, around that time. We're going to be live on NASA TV in the press conference, and uh, I believe we have the ability to ask questions alongside the press. Uh, I'm not sure if that's something I'm going to do, but maybe I'll try to record or may maybe live stream. I don't know if I'll be able to live stream that, but certainly record and live, uh, try to tweet, live tweet, I guess, um, what's going on there. So that should be really interesting. But then Friday, the big day, gotta gotta be back at JPL at a, at a bright and early, not even bright, I doubt the sun's even up yet, 4 a.m. I gotta be there because at 4.30 to 5.30 a.m. Pacific time, we're going to be, I don't know if we're gonna be in the control room or maybe like the press observation area or what, but that is that is the time frame when Cassini will will make its final plunge, specifically at 4.54 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time is when they're expecting the uh, the data to cut from Cassini, thus sort of uh, indicating that it uh, it has uh, quote unquote impacted. It's not gonna like impact. It's it's a it's a gas planet, but the interference with the upper atmosphere about 900 miles above the cloud tops that we can actually visually see uh, is going to much like if something enters the Earth's atmosphere, it'll heat up and break apart and burn and melt and uh, become one with Saturn. The atoms will be reduced and to become one with the planet Saturn. And yeah, that'll be broadcast live on NASA TV. I don't know if there's going to be any indication of us, the NASA social there, but that'll certainly be broadcast live on NASA TV. And then there's also another press conference uh, after that which I'm not sure if we're participating in or not, but uh, uh, but yeah, that's gonna that's actually going to be a pretty early day on Friday, and that's going to conclude the NASA social from JPL. Since, since that is ending so early on Friday, depending on how tired I am, or I might have to go back and take a nap or something to the hotel, um, I, I would like to, since I'm in LA and I haven't got to do this yet, I would like to visit the California Science mm. Center which is where Endeavour is currently on display, the space shuttle Endeavour. It's the only space shuttle I haven't seen. Uh, I saw Discovery at the Juno NASA Social. It was parked in the VAB, undergoing kind of rebuilding and refurbishment before it got transported to the Smithsonian. I've also seen Discovery on the launch pad a few times because I went to see it launch and it didn't. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that was when I saw Discovery and then I saw Atlantis during the SpaceX NASA social, social, excuse me, we went to the uh, space shuttle uh, processing facility, basically the hangar that Atlantis was in, and got to stand underneath it. And and perhaps I maybe maybe took a, a cheeky poke. I I touched the uh, the front landing wheel gear. Uh, we weren't supposed to touch it, but I did. Um, so yeah, and then of course I've, I've been to Kennedy Space Center since it's been on display, so I've seen Atlantis on display as well. So yeah, Endeavour is the last space shuttle I haven't seen, so I'd like to check that out on Friday. I mean, I might try to rope in, depending on what sort of friends I make, the uh, some of the other participants of the NASA social if they're hanging around. Uh, but certainly if any of you guys are interested and you live in the area or you happen to be in the area, um, first of all, I would suggest checking out the Science Center on your own, regardless. But I'm, I'm I th I'll, I'll probably tweet and stuff like that, and maybe uh, we can have a, a little meet meet up under under a a space flown space shuttle <laughs> or something like that at the Science Center. I don't know, it's something casual, informal, not really uh, trying to bust out all the bells and whistles. But uh, but yeah, keep an eye on my my Twitter uh, is where I'll be most active for that. Uh, and then I come back 
And I come back, and then, and then, my friends, I've got all the time in the world for all the streams, all the far lands or bustitudes, and all the other things I, I keep trying to do. That is until October. <laughs> until the following month, when both TwitchCon and the Mindcrack Marathon happen uh, during a few of the weekends in October. Um, so yeah, <laughs> just can't get get any time to myself. Can't get any time to myself. But that's all right, right? <laughs> Isn't it? Watches as his Twitch sub count drops and plummets. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that's that's how the rest of this week is gonna go. I feel so. Yeah, I appreciate everybody's patience with these sort of things. Hopefully you've been following along on Twitter. I tweet and retweet pictures and things when I'm at conventions and stuff. A lot of my friends are a lot better at social media izing during these things and taking pictures of the group and stuff. So yeah, like we uh, we visited the Minecraft offices. Which was really cool. Uh, here in in Redmond, uh, Anasia knows a lot of people because she works with the uh, the marketplace and stuff, um, and of course also through the the Mixer slash Microsoft partnership ownership situation. So yeah, we we toured the the U.S. based Minecraft offices, which is really neat. And then we also toured the Mixer offices, which was also neat and kind of the main where Xbox is headquartered in, in the Redmond campus. It's kind of a weird the Microsoft campus. It reminds me a lot of a college campus and perhaps not in a good way. There's like a food court. There's like a quad. It's kind of I can see why a lot of younger people end up working there. It's a very easy transition from from college to Microsoft. I'm sure Apple and Google all have very similar setups, but uh, yeah, let's go to sleep. Woof, and continue in the morning. And a spaceitudeness. Ooh, and I'm, I don't have any boatsness. I need a boat. Pop, pop, pop. Ping, peep, peep. Oh, yeah. I mean, really, other than spending time with friends, which is always great, um, doing the meeting the the lifeless planet, lifeless moon developer, um, and then kind of touring the Microsoft area campus, which I hadn't done before because I really don't know many people who work there or anything like that. So that was really cool. Yeah, like I said, the Minecraft offices were neat, um, and then we had. <laughs> As a kind of an aside, after the tour, quote unquote, um, they have this like closet that's just full of all the merch, either leftover merch or trial merch or just merch that was, was from the past. Minecraft, obviously. Uh, they opened that up and said, "Have at it." And we're like, "What? <laughs> no, just pick, pick, pick what you want and take it home." So <laughs> that was a little bit overwhelming, like a bunch of T-shirts, Lego sets. Uh, I was, I was, I was considering a Lego set or two, but I don't want to fall down that endless well. I don't have that much space. People already still want me to get the uh, the Saturn V one after I got the Space Shuttle one here. Um, but I pretty much picked up all the uh, wolf merchandise. <laughs> uh, the, there's a little wolf plushie, there are some, a few wolf pins, uh, and then they're like, oh, you must like wolves. <laughs> so I picked up, but they, they like gave me this exclusive Japanese wolf little figurine eraser. I think it's an eraser. I guess it's little tiny erasers are big in, in Japan, but it's got all the, the, the Japanese uh, on the box as opposed to English. Exclusive! So yeah, that was neat. It was a little bit like overwhelming. Like I said, uh, uh, I can, I, what do I, can I, and you know, someone like Anasia had their arms full of like hats and shirts. <laughs> so yeah, that was an interesting time. Very nice people who seemed to work there and a very interesting kind of office. Someone who, honestly, I've never worked in like an office like that. When I was a web designer, I was literally the only employee, full-time employee. Uh, and we literally were working out of a closet, basically. It was a very small, maybe 200 square foot at most. A little one-room office with four computers in it. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I've never, like, worked in any of those sort of offices. Uh, so it's always interesting to see 
how that works out. I don't know if I would still be able to. The Minecraft offices seem nice and open. I feel like that would be more comfortable than the Xbox offices where the mixer is located. It's a little bit of a different vibe over there. Um, it's on the official campus, where I suppose the Microsoft offices are... I think they're just in some random office buildings that they bought or are leasing or something like that to, to expand. Um, Oh yeah, and then we stopped by, similarly, like across the street is the, uh, whoa, the Forza offices. Uh, and uh, there was a Lamborghini parked outside, and then inside the, the main entrance, the kind of foyer, as you will, there was a, a McLaren, uh, then there was a, a the new Ford GT, but it was like the, the race car version of the Ford GT, like the, 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 the I don't know, I don't know what kind of racing, but just the... GT car or something like that. And then there was a Porsche GT car, I think? Or no, was it the Audi? I don't know, one of those wacky ones with the big wings and stuff. <laughs> I don't know. Cone would be far more interested in that stuff. So that was neat. Uh, and they're also, the Minecraft offices are in the same building as the, uh, the Halo, the Halo team, which I've never really played much of. Um, so there's a bunch of like Halo memorabilia and stuff, but that was neat. That was a, a neat experience uh, Overall indeed So yeah, that's woo certainly got a lot of stuff to talk about here for Far Lands of Us If anything, we'll be we'll, We've got this content content woo. Uh, what else is happening? I think that 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 sums up the the PAX week Oh, 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 uh, we went back to Heather Lake and I got, it was, it was very, it was very smoky this past week, so it was the same sort of haze, uh, but it was another nice hike, uh, but I, I, I got to indeed inspect and I recorded and I might clip together a vlog and, uh, we were with Fabe, I don't know if you remember Fabe from Minecraft Murder and things like that, um, he had his drone, so he flew his drone around a bit. Uh, around Heather Lake, so he gave me some of that drone footage. Maybe I'll cut up something together and put that together, but uh, the main thing is is I, I inspected the fire that I found, the smoldering root tree fire, and they did indeed take care of that by taking down the whole tree. It was like a little sapling tree, maybe 10, 12 feet tall. But yeah, I got there and I'm like, where's the tree that was on fire? Oh, it's gone. Like, there's, a, there's still like where I saw the fire and it's all the dirt has been cleared away. Uh, and uh, looking over the ledge, the, the tree is 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 in the lake. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we we saved the forest, ladies and gentlemen. We saved the forest. They must have just gone out there, and it's probably a concern that the fire might be inside the trunk of the tree, in addition to the roots. Uh, so they just decided to chop the whole thing down and put it in the water. Uh, but yeah, a great success. Uh, we uh, we we ourselves are are whoa. Speaking of fire. We ourselves are, are... we don't go that way, Wolfie. <laughs> our uh, Smokey, Smokey the Bear, only Kurt J. Mac can prevent forest fires. And I guess you as well. But yeah, I guess that's a little update to have. Boy, howdy. So yeah, I'm, uh, oof, there's a lot going on. A lot going on. Slightly concerning. As I've mentioned many times before, the thing about Twitch, and now that I've been focusing on Twitch, is consistency. Uh, kind of difficult to be consistent when you got so many things going on. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping these things going on are, are actually things you guys are also interested in seeing. Um, they're things I'm interested in doing, but I've, you know, I've also got to keep in mind the fact that I, I need to have uh, an income. And you guys have been great with that. Patrons, uh, subs, um, and all those sort of things. Um, and, you know, the viewership on the F1 series certainly helps out a little bit, even though, as, as we all know, YouTube ain't doing too good lately, and, and in the near future, maybe doing even, even worse. Woo! Uh, so, uh, but, but we're doing all right. I'm certainly, I'm certainly not in any, in any bad positions or anything like that, so don't, if, if I'm ever talking about being worried that I'm not streaming enough or that I'm losing subs, it's not, it's not because I'm, Feel like I'm gonna get kicked out of my apartment or whatever. It's it's just uh, you know, it, it's it's good to stay consistent and keep consistent, uh, and and try not to be 
completely forgotten, but I also want to be able to do and, and share all of these kind of neat interests that may or may not deal directly with video games. Uh, but today, uh, Tuesday, I'm planning, if I didn't mention this, I don't think I did. It's confusing because I started recording already and I mentioned a bunch of things, so I don't remember when I mentioned these things, in the failed recording or this one. But today, Tuesday, in my stream, I'm going to try to use and maybe do a little bit of a preview of the Cassini NAS social and what's going to happen with Cassini by using the uh, Eyes on the Solar System, which is NASA's 3D program, very similar to like a... Oh, uh, space engine sort of 3D simulator. Not as not as grand. It sticks to the sticks to the uh, planetary system, the uh, the solar system here. But it allows you to track all of NASA's robotic missions, and I'm sure they even have like the International Space Station, what their current status is and mission information. Uh, so I would like to perhaps even just start out today, Tuesday's stream by following that. We used that uh, previously, talked about Juno, and then we used that actually during the, uh, when we were live streaming the landing of, woo, the live streaming the landing of uh, the Curiosity rover. We did that, that live stream a long, long time ago uh, of Curiosity landing, and uh, I, I did have a small screen of the NASA feed, but I also, for the most part, had eyes on the solar system running kind of real-time graphics as to what was happening with Curiosity uh, as it was going through its descent and the sky crane. Uh, so I think I'll do the same thing for Cassini here, a little bit of a intro, a run-up to when I'm leaving on Wednesday and then for Thursday, the, the actual NASA social. Oh yeah! Hopefully this stuff is good. <laughs> um, it's, like I said, it's it's interesting to me. That's why I'm going for it. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll see how well, I, and perhaps with more practice, we'll see how I can translate that into either videos or streams or, or, or just stuff I can talk about and uh, fall back on that hopefully, for those of you unable uh, to participate in these sort of things, I can I can share a, a, a personal perspective from, from my own self. Hey, Wolfie. Time for the final hidey hole here. Oop, yep, yep, there you go. Well done. In deed. Oop. Oh, I sure am glad I collected all that other coal when there's a whole bunch of coal right here. Woof, Wolfie agrees. I'm not very efficient at collecting coal. So yeah, thanks, like I said, once again for your, your patience. Kind of keeping on a good weekly basis, semi-weekly basis here for Far Lands or Bust. We'll be ramping things up once we set up the uh, this season's charity and whatnot. Most definitely an important part of the series. And and yeah, maybe even uh, I don't know what sort of opportunities I'll have to ask questions at the NASA social. But if you guys are on Twitter. Uh, send send maybe things you might want to know about Cassini oh. specifically the end of mission Cassini that I don't know maybe I'll if I if I get a, a some some guts or two I might be able to stand up and ask a few questions of the the, the professionals representing the Cassini team there or some of some of your questions if you have anything specific you'd like to know about and we'll get on NASA TV woo or, or something or maybe just on my feet we'll get on but uh, but yeah. Thank you so much, everybody. My name is Kurt. I'm ready to do some science. And I will see you next time. Content! Woo!